Hello and welcome. We've been talking about the infrastructure deficit in India in the years ahead. We've talked about the challenges facing the power, roads, ports, airports, and the $1 trillion dream to really fund all the infrastructure projects that we have coming up or would want coming up. Can renewable energy or alternative energy fix that gap and to what extent? We know it's small, but it's surely getting bigger. And joining me is someone now who is making this uh, interesting, this piece sound bigger and more interesting in, in many ways. Alan Rosling, founder of Kiran Energy or Solar Energy. Alan, thank you very much for joining us. Alan, you're also a former director with the Tata Group. And uh, you've transited from uh, the corporate world to becoming an energy entrepreneur or a solar co energy co entrepreneur. Co-founder though, Kiran, co because um, the, the rest of the team, and particularly my co-founder, Adashir, contractor, would right. uh, not like me to say that I'm founder. Sure, sure. It's okay. a team effort as ever. Great. So, first question, you know, uh, I think if I were to look at the numbers for the last couple of years, maybe led more by states like Gujarat and Rajasthan, there has been tremendous progress in uh, new capacity in solar energy, right? Uh, what's your own experience been and uh, what is it, what is this, what, what would your experience tell us? Well, Adishir Contractor and I set up the Kiran Energy just three years ago and today we are among the leading solar companies in India with 80 megawatts commissioned and operating and evacuating power to the grid. So overall... And 80 I, megawatts can power a mid-sized town? Yes. Yeah. So um, overall our experience has, has been very good. Now of course there have been challenges and we'd love to have moved faster, but broadly I think the solar policy and the solar industry demonstrates what can be done. The government has come out, or governments I should say, because it's a national solar mission from the central government, and then state policies, particularly in Gujarat, but in other states as well, as you mentioned, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Rajasthan. Um, all of these have provided us opportunity. And the regulation, which in many ways is maybe more important than the policy, the regulation is also very sophisticated and forward-looking. The issues have sometimes been around the implementation challenges in India of getting land, of the RPOs, the Renewable Purchase Obligations that the regulators specify being enforced, um, and the details of getting project financing, genuine project financing on a non-recourse basis implemented in India. Right. So who do you sell your power to? The moment we're selling our power to the grid. So in Gujarat, we are selling to uh, the state grid, Juvenal. Mm -hmm. In the National Solar Mission Projects in Rajasthan, where we have 55 megawatts operating now, we are selling to the central government, a subsidiary of NTPC called NVVM. In the future, we believe that increasingly we will be selling power direct to large corporate purchasers, sometimes by being on their campus, within their boundary fence, on their roof, and sometimes through open access. So for us, that's a very exciting opportunity, and we want to have a balance in the business, partly selling to government under long-term PPA, and partly under long-term supply agreements direct to large companies. Right. Now, uh, uh, what's the cost like? I mean, you know, some, some of the biggest questions that are posed, I mean, we've seen how companies in the U.S. went bankrupt, manufacturing uh, the wafers or the chips, and uh, China came, uh, came in, became a large supplier. Presumably, this is to our advantage, but how does it work? What are the cost economics like? Well, costs are coming down. So solar power, which people still have in their mind is expensive, is now very competitive against many types of generation, particularly against diesel. So if anyone is using a diesel generator, we are much Can you, can you give us some numbers? Well, diesel today uh, would be at least 14 and maybe 16 rupees. Per unit? Per unit, kilowatt hour. Mm. And a large plant in a good location like Rajasthan or, or, or Gujarat today would be anything from six and a half to eight rupees, depending on scale and technology. And that's the operating? That's the price at which you sell to customer okay. with the returns that are built in for us. Right. Uh, so that is, for, for commercial industrial consumers, there are many grids that charge more than that, mm. particularly grids in the south. Uh, people are paying six and a half, seven, eight rupees for in power. In any case, yeah. And often, of course, they have no power. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore, they are using grid power. Yeah. So solar economics have, come, have been dramatically changed in the last three years. There's a long-run learning curve in this industry. So every year, for 50 years on average, the cost has come down by about 7%. But in the last three years, costs have come down from 18 crores a megawatt, something like that, when we started as an estimate, to much lower than that. And in terms of the unit electricity, uh, three years ago, the regulator 
had said 1790. So and you said today, 18 crores of capital cost? Of capital cost. Per megawatt. Now we're, now we're down to seven or eight crores a megawatt. And equally on kilowatt hour, unit cost. Mm. Um, the regulator originally set 1791 was the original regulated rate. And today people are offering six and a half, seven, eight rupees, depending on location. So there's been a dramatic change. And as you mentioned, part of that is because of the huge capacity build up in China. Um, and technology change, mainly from the US. So one of the things that concerns us is that if the government does anything to cut off India from the scale of manufacturing and from the space of innovation in the sector, that will be detrimental for customers. So talk of local content restrictions, anti-dumping, so governments, saying, governments have to balance yeah, policy, but yeah. it is not good for India to cut ourselves off from world-class technology. Yeah. So you're saying don't depend only on Indian manufacturers, but also keep the tap open, when it, you know, particularly from China and so yeah. on. Yeah, India is a great place to manufacture, mm. but to, for somebody to invest in a manufacturing plant, you need a large, growing, stable market which, with some certainty. So if we have a large domestic market for solar power, there will be, over time, the development of large-scale, competitive solar right. manufacturing units. At the moment, we don't have that. Um, and there is talk of requiring certain types of projects to buy from local sources. Um, now, governments obviously have to balance a desire to have manufacturing and job creation domestically and to save foreign exchange versus a requirement to have power at lower and lower costs to solve our grid electricity crisis right. and in order to reach out to rural areas and in order to mitigate climate change. So we need a balance of both. But in other industries, we've seen that if there is a large demand in India, anything, even if there isn't actually for export, but India is a fantastic manufacturing center for technologically oriented um, engineered products. Right. Last question, you know, so one of the uh, things that strikes me is that you require a lot of space. I mean, you require several acres per megawatt uh, of, of power that you want to generate. Is that, uh, a re since sunshine seems to be really, pr I mean, uh, more or less under control, uh, at least in India, uh, is the space going to be one of your key Challenges? Yes, land, land is or an land. issue. Uh, uh, we, broadly, we need four and a half to five and a half acres a megawatt, depending on the type of panel. Now, obviously, you can be creative and use roof top or surplus land, mm. um, which is not being used for something else. The good news is that the type of land we typically would like tends to be marginal land. So if you go to Rajasthan or Northern, Northern Gujarat or areas of AP or, or um, Eastern Maharashtra, northern Karnataka, there are large tracts of land which have very little agricultural mm. merit because they, they are arid. Yeah. Uh, and that's land which is perfect for solar. So we like sunshine. We like flat land. So Rajasthan in particular, but other areas as well, has more than enough space. But for that, we then need the evacuation and the open access and the wheeling system so that we could take Feedback. solar from the best places in India and deliver it to where the consumption in the cities and the industrial zones really is. Right. So last question. So uh, what's lined up for the next year in terms of new projects or expansions? Well, growth for us. Uh, we will bid when the National Solar Mission Round 2 is announced. So far we've won two rounds of bidding. Uh, we have a 5 megawatt and then we have 50 megawatt in, the, in Round 1B. So we would obviously want to bid for uh, Round 2. Uh, we are very interested in state policies in a number of states in India that have announced policies. And we will be closing deals with a number of our corporate customers uh, to deliver directly uh, to companies. So I think Kiran Energy will, be, will still be a modest power company, but much larger in terms of renewables and, and solar in the next couple of years. Right. Alan, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you.